Roosevelt Island, which at one point had a very fractured, you know, okay. feeling. So we'll um, actually we're gonna do that now. Yeah. Okay, great. So why don't you give us tell us a little bit? Yeah, let 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 me start first. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Oh, that means right. there you go. We got this down. We want to make sure we right. 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 give our our new guy a chance. Okay, great. Go ahead, Kevin. So you know, thank you for having me as as taking the position of uh, the Chief for Public Safety. Uh, and one thing that I, I, I really want to say is that uh, let's keep Jack in our prayers. You know, I, I've, speak, I've spoken to him and I've heard that uh, he's in the hospital as of uh, uh, last night. So, uh, but uh, I spoke to him on Sunday and uh, I told him that I was going to be coming to the meeting and uh, like just classic Jack, he would. He said, "I wish I could get there, you know, just to, you know." Get it on a Tuesday for him. Yeah, just so that he, so he said he wish he could get here so he could he could spark with the with the with the crowd, <laughs> so and go back and forth. But uh, but he 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 has uh, put a lot of confidence in me to uh, keep up with what he's really started, and uh, uh, I could say that in, in my three years as his as his deputy and as his assistant that uh, one thing that I did learn about coming to these meetings is that, uh, that, that, that Jack really cared about the community. Uh, he was, uh, he, he took everything that, that, that was discussed at these meetings and uh, he really, you know, uh, took it back to, to our, our department to act on, you know, the stuff that, that, that we discussed there. So uh, he took this meeting uh, extremely serious, and uh, and I'm going to keep on uh, in, in his uh, the same way that that he had been doing it. Um, and uh, you know, I, I've heard a, a number of times that uh, that that Jack he pretty much laid the groundwork for how we can work together in the community, mm -hmm. and there's no reason for for it to change or go anywhere different. Um, uh, he, he just said, "Be you know." You know, uh, receive calls, uh, listen to complaints, and uh, and and act accordingly. And uh, his number one uh, uh, priority is that uh, you know keep the lines of communication open. So we will do that, and and, and we'll we'll continue that way. And then uh, since in Jack's absence, uh, I was you know fortunate enough that that Susan. And, and Shelton from Riyadh, they appointed me the, the new chief. And uh, with that appointment, I had to pick a deputy. And uh, I know uh, uh, Deputy Amoroso from the NYPD. Uh, he comes uh, highly recommended. Uh, we work together. Uh, his his uh, he, his his forte and his expertise uh, is, is training. Uh, he in NYPD. He was probably one of the best training officers of of all of the trainers in NYPD. And uh, as as a rank system goes in NYPD, uh, Deputy Amoroso was a detective. But uh, not only was he a detective, there's a ranked of detective, and there's third grade detective, second grade detective, and first grade detective. And Deputy Amoroso was a first grade detective for over uh, 15 years, I, I believe, 10, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, he was a first grade detective, um, which means that he was promoted by the police commissioner twice for the expertise in, in his uh, work. Uh, not only was, was he dedicated in training, um, his, uh, one, of the, one of the prerequisites that, that Susan uh, really, really harped on was that uh, the way that we're going to operate in public safety is that we're going to be in the community policing model. And she insisted that uh, that whoever we do hire and whoever comes aboard would have to have that community policing background. Because community policing, to us, it's a way that, that Susan views it, is that whoever is going to be in the public safety, from the chief down to the officer, they're going to get to know the neighborhood. They're going to know the community. They're going to, you know, Myself and I'm bringing him along. We we stand out on Main Street. We walk around and we talk to each and you know people, you know, whether we know them or not. We're we're you know we're here to help. And uh, and she insisted that 
that whoever came aboard had to have a background in community policing. And uh, as it turns out, uh, the tech, uh, Deputy Amoroso, uh, with his initial training in the NYPD was in community policing. And he initially started out in the housing development. And uh, that was his, his base training. And uh, he, he was one of, one of the top officers in, in the housing bureau. And his forte was walking a beat and getting to know people in the neighborhood. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was an easy thing to bring him aboard with uh, his background and knowledge. Uh, and he also had been in a number of uh, enforcement units, so he does know crime and he does know how to deal with different neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, it, it was uh, uh, really good to have him with, with his uh, background and expertise uh, to bring him aboard. And like uh, anything else, there, there has to be some type of, of learning curve because uh, Roosevelt Island is unique. Yeah. So, uh, you know, bringing on a person with with the personality that wanted to not only get into the community, learn the community, but be a part of the community. And that's uh, who I brought along, and you know, he can talk uh, about himself. Bless you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, okay, what, you were in NYCHA? Yes, I, was, I started there, what girl? in uh, Lower Manhattan, the Lillian Wall houses, uh -huh. um, and the Jacob Reese houses. I was, uh, so let, let me go back to the beginning. So I, I, I just retired from the NYPD, um, you know, before I started this job. I retired on August 30, 31st was my last day. 28 years and four months of service. Um, like like uh, the, the chief said, um, I, uh, I've been in a number of different units. I started in 1991 with, uh, I was a housing uh, police officer in the housing developments. Um, where that's when the departments were actually separated. You know, NYPD was separate from transit and housing, and I, I became uh, something that I wanted to do. My father was uh, a detective in the New York City Police Department also, so I kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps. He was my, he was my inspiration. He was always my hero, and I wanted to do that, you know? And uh, I was at, I, my first assignment, when I first came out, was uh, they were looking for a director patrol officer. It's just kind of like the CPOP. Mm -hmm. um, they, back then, they used to call it directed patrol or project community officers, PCOs. Um, so I, uh, I volunteered for it. It was something I knew I'd be working in the same place every single day, and you would learn the community and work with the community and do enforcement in the community and you know go to community meetings and deal with it. And it was something I was interested in, and uh, I did that for my first three years. That was in 1991, you said. Yeah, 1991. Uh, that's when I when I. When I came on. Uh, well, I, 1991, I was in the academy, and then when I graduated the academy, that's where I went. And I did that for a, a number of years, and I excelled at it, and uh, I think I did really well. I learned the ins and outs of uh, the whole, at that time, there was a big um, heroin ep epidemic in the Lower East Side, and it was, just, you know, it was a balance of learning the community and, you know, helping out the, the, the people in the, uh, the community. Uh, each, each building used to have, like, a special uh, community patrols and stuff like that, and I worked with them. And that was a uniform thing. And from there, I, uh, I moved on to being in the uh, anti-crime unit there, and, uh, and all the different units that I could possibly be. And I knew I wanted to be a detective somehow, and I knew that I wanted to go in that route with my dad. Um, and in 1999, um, I decided to put in for the narcotics division. And uh, that was something that was a, a way for me to enhance my way of getting my detective shield. And then, you know, I put in for it, and I had a great, you know, record at the police department. And I got into the narcotics division in 1999. And there, I worked my way up. And I, uh, I fell into it, fell into training. And that's really my uh, my thing. I really like, like the chief said. I I, uh, I like to train. I like to teach. It's something that I. I I never thought that I would want to do, but I started to get involved in teaching new offices and specialized uh, teams and units. And uh, I, I think I'm like, proud to say I think I made my mark in the NYPD. I've been responsible for not just programs within the Detective Bureau, but I've uh, I've done programs with uh, the Training Bureau. They would pull me out of the Detective Bureau to go to the Police Academy and do fellow programs. And, um, one of the things I'm most proud of is uh, the vehicle stop program that's run in the NYPD right now. I, I was responsible where officers, instead of uh, 
going to opposite sides of the car, they start to work as a team on the same side of the vehicle. And it's something that I, I brought to the department. I'm, I'm very proud of it because now it's, it's utilized within the police department's one of their options. Um, and, um, you know, I, uh, I, I fulfilled my, uh, my goals in the NYPD. I went to the highest ranking, most prestigious rank of detective first grade. In the, you know, in the detective world, that is the highest and most prestigious rank. I got that on merit, and I'm proud of that. And uh, what lands me here? I, I started to do training. I, I did some training for the peace officers. Yeah, I did some training for them, and um, and I, I really felt that they were eager to learn. You know, and uh, I, I think I had a respect for them, and I think they respected me. And, uh, when the chief gave me a call, I worked for the chief for, for a number of years. Uh, he was he was my boss for a number of years, and uh, I like to say I was a number one guy. I was a hard, hard worker. I'm very determined, uh, in getting the job done. And uh, when he called me and said, uh, you know, you have such a good rapport with the officers, would you be interested in something like this? And uh, I was very interested in it. And I remember I went home to my uh, my wife and I said, uh, I have something I would like to do. You know. Involved in it. I like the community. I, I love the island. I, I do. I really do. Yeah. I brought my wife here uh, for the festival, and she was like, "It was beautiful." Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I like it. You know, I like everything about it. It's like uh, it's from across the, when you go across the bridge, it's, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, I wish I wish I could live here. I was looking at the apartment. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow, this is beautiful. I've been here a long time. <laughs> my first building. I said when I was like. My wife, which is like, that's because we we live upstate New York. It's, it's a little far away from me. From me. I'm up in uh, Orange County, yeah. in Monroe, Woodbury. Yeah, it's far. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm planning on selling the house and moving a little closer so that it's not so much of a commute for me. And uh, when I was like, when she came, she's like, this is beautiful. She walked the shore like for an hour. She was walking up and down the thing. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. You know, I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to do the job. I'm excited to deal with the community. I have been going. It's been about a month and a week now that I've had my feet on the ground. And uh, I've been going to different people and meeting different people and going to different meetings and, and, and trying to get involved as much as I can. You know, a lot of names. If I forget your name, I'm sorry. I apologize for it. I'm just meeting so many people. And um, I'm excited. I, I hope I, I you know, fulfill all your needs to the best that I can. And, you know, I'm, I'm also very open. So, uh, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Uh, Grazie. You know, anything you guys, I have a policy, you know, to come and talk to me and make the album better, you know, safer. Why don't we that? Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. I don't even know what you said. Oh, this is just our new deputy. Our new deputy director. I know what's going on. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we take a few questions? Then? Right, and two new good. people came and, in. Matthew, and, uh, and wanted Matt, to introduce, introduce yourself to, to, to this is, you know, well, go ahead. Sure. Hi, my name's Matt Katz. Uh, I'm, I'm a newcomer. I've only lived on the island for 30 years. Um, <laughs> I've worked in the resident association, where that lady is the current president, for about 15 years. I was president for four terms, eight years, and I would make, I would urge both of you. Uh, to work with some of the people, I mean, looking at this, you've got 200 years of experience. Mm -hmm. Just if you say, work with these folks, because they know how it works. All right, I'm not going to call on you on the question and answer period. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing no, Robert good. Well, we're gonna, today, Matt. We're just, just introduced, and then in the, in the question and answer period. Sure. My name is uh, Sarah Jolci, and the chair.